Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing to study Philemon as a textbook of persuasion. How do you persuade someone to do the right thing when you don't really have power you can exert over them to force them to do the right thing, and you suspect they don't really want to do the right thing? Uh, and we've looked at the different motivators, and that's what we're doing in this study, that Paul uses in the letter to try to convince Philemon to do the right thing, which is to release his slave, um, Onesimus, the slave that was his before Onesimus was ever a Christian, the slave who'd run away, the slave who may have stolen from him, the slave who ended up in jail, the slave who was baptized by Paul. Or, um, he wants him set free. And, and we've uh, noticed um, some motivators that Paul has already used. Love, the primary, it's the scaffolding upon which all the rest of it is built. Virtue, this is not who you are. You're good. You're not the villain in, in your own story. And then respect, I, I'm treating you um, as, a, as a peer, and, and I'm not going to presume um, anything that would violate your right to choose, your self-determination. And and that in itself calls upon him to extend the same respect to Onesimus, also his brother in Christ. Well, we wanted to talk today about personal history. And I said at the beginning, these all sort of overlap, and they do. You've seen me read the same verses and pull out, you know, a different a different thought, a different notion, a different motivator, but the love, the and 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 the respect really are born out of a history together that Paul also uses as leverage to get him to do what he wants to do, and that starts in the first verse by calling him a fellow worker, by saying, "I pray for you every day." That's personal relationship. That's personal history. That's saying. I'm always uh, refreshed uh, by the love that you share. I get joy from from the man that you are because of the relationship that that we have, and that becomes important whenever he says things like, um, "I wish to keep him with me," verse thirteen. That. In your behalf, he might minister to me in my imprisonment for the gospel. These men all had personal history together. Onesimus was Philemon's slave. Paul and Philemon are friends. Onesimus and Philemon may have run into each other. Or excuse me, Paul and Onesimus may have run into each other at Philemon's house. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that could easily have happened. And Paul is saying, I'm in jail. <laughs> I need help. And you can't be here to do that, nor would I ask you. But Onesimus can be here for you. I mean, doesn't our own history together as co-workers, as friends, as brothers in Christ make you want to help me at this time? Well, why won't you do this one thing then? So that he can be here and be your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet to help take care of your dear friend, me. While I'm while I'm in prison, um, when someone doesn't want to do the right thing, it usually has to do with the way they're feeling in the moment, and the wrong thing is so destructive, and relationships that have been built and nurtured over years can be destroyed in an instant. And Paul is making clear in this letter. We, we've, he's saying to Philemon, we, we've got a lot of miles together. And that means something. And so, based upon those miles that we've had together, I'm asking you for this thing. So don't destroy what we've taken years to build, our relationship, our friendship, our love for each other. It's that history um, that, that has produced the love, the history that has produced the, 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 the respect. Um, and, and so Paul is calling to mind that history and is saying, you know, 
as friends that go back so far, I know you want to be here to help me. Well, you can't be, and you can be by sending Onesimus. It is it's just such a it's such a beautiful thought, uh, a beautiful way to to persuade. Okay, so we've talked about love, we've talked about goodness, virtue, we've talked about respect, we've talked about personal history. We want to talk about some that are a little um, um, more demanding. And we'll begin by talking about expectations. The expectations of the community, the expectations of the Lord. You know, you have a standard to live up to, so do it. And we'll talk about that next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.